Let's learn in this light board session about the Kubernetes service account. So we have the famous question, why do I need a service account? So in a Kubernetes cluster, we have many tenants that wants to access the cluster, like the users who can be like the project teams or the cluster administrators. And because those are people, those are persons, so they will use their email accounts, they will use their identities in order to access to that uh, cluster. But now what about uh, the DevOps CD pipelines and also the pods that will need access to the Kubernetes resources, to the Kubernetes API server in order to perform some actions. Think about here the ingress uh, controller or the GitOps tools that needs to be able to deploy pods into the, uh, the cluster, for example, or to create services and delete some other uh, resources. Think about also the network policies who will need to restrict access or the other tools uh, like the service meshes who needs to um, inject, uh, let's say, uh, inject annotations or inject sidecar containers into other pods. So those uh, tools will need access to the control plane in order to achieve these different actions. And for that, these tools, those actually uh, pods are machines, okay? So for a machine, it will not use a human identity. It will use a machine identity known as the service account. If you have used Azure or any other cloud provider, you are maybe familiar about the notion of a service account, or if you have used a database, it's the same concept that we are now using in Kubernetes to allow access from machine to another machine or to the API server in our case. So that's the uh, Kubernetes service account, our topic for today. So when we have a Kubernetes a cluster, we would have actually the uh, API server or the control plane available right here. And within that control plane, we would have actually the Kubernetes objects who will be persisted into, uh, let's say here, into the etcd database. So that's the Kubernetes uh, database, that's my etcd, where I have all the resources deployed there. And of course, this is multiple databases, not, not one single. And then into that control plane, I have here the API server, okay? And the API server is the entry point, or that's actually the main endpoint to get access to the cluster uh, configuration. And then if I have uh, let's say a pods in my cluster. Of course, I would have here some nodes in my uh, cluster. Let's say this is here one node. And inside that nodes, I might have one or multiple uh, pods running. So let's say I have here a pod running inside that node. If this pod now wants to access that API server, we should note first that the API server is exposed through a REST endpoint, okay? So it is using REST API, and here we have a REST endpoint. If you have, uh, if you ever see in the Kubernetes uh, uh, services within the default namespace, you will see a service called default, or call it actually Kubernetes dot SVC, or dot actually default, sorry dot default dot svc that's the namespace used to access the uh, kubernetes api server so my pod here if it wants to access the api server should go through that rest endpoint right here but that api server uses authentication and authorization so this pod needs to be authorized in order to access that api server to give access to the pod, we'll be leveraging another Kubernetes component called the service account. And that's our topic for today. So a service account is just a Kubernetes object that would have a name and a namespace. Now, the service account itself by default doesn't have any role in uh, defining there. So we need to create the roles ourselves. So we need to create first here a Kubernetes role that's another Kubernetes object. And then second, we need to create a Kubernetes role binding. Within the role, actually we define what are the resources that could be accessed 
by this role so the resources could be like the uh, pods the deployment the services the ingress the config maps the secrets and so on and then the second attribute that will describe the role is the verbs and the verbs will describe what we can do with these pods so when we do q control uh, command line we can do get pods we can do list pods we can do create we can do also uh, delete we can do edit so all of these are verbs and we choose a combination of one or two resources uh, one or many resources with one or many verbs and the same will applies for role binding another kubernetes uh, uh, object that will describe also two different attributes first attribute is going to be the role so it will go to bind to a reference role in this case that's going to be the role described here and then the second one will describe to whom to give access to this role so that's going to be my user or a group within my azure active directory or in our case here it could be also a service account so then if i do this config my service account will get that airbag role and it will use it inside the pod so how it will use it inside the pod actually what will happen is that the service account will go to mount a directory inside my pod so it will go um, inside a specific folder i think it's something like var uh, secrets uh, kubernetes something like this and then inside that folder it will expose some files so it will expose a ca dot certificate it will expose a token and then it will expose the namespace So all of these will be exposed and they will be available for my pod. So then my pod, because it have this volume right here, it can access uh, the API server using these different attributes. So it can use here, let's say we can simulate, for example, using a curl command. And then can go to that Kubernetes service, Kubernetes uh, slash whatever is that API slash v1 slash pods for example and then it can request the list of the pods there and it will get that json response available there so this is for get it can also perform some other operations like for post delete um, edit and so on the the rest uh, uh, verbs that you know great i hope this video was helpful for you thank you